everyone this is Lisa Wisenso and in this video I'm going to walk you through how to utilize the Chrome Classroom cloud tools to monitor and manage Chromebooks in your classroom so the first thing I'd like to do is to introduce our portal this is portal p o r t a l dot senso s e n s o dot cloud c l o u d that's what you will type into your browser to get to your personal portal for Senso so that you can see the devices that you yourself will have in your Google Classrooms. Meaning that your tech team has already pushed our client out to your student devices, but for you to see them in your portal, you get to create your own Google Classrooms that we will tie in. We call it Google Classroom Sync. So you'll see this right here. I'm going to point at it. This is a Google Classroom that I have created called First Period AP Physics. I have added in my two users right here, and those two users are the only users that I'm going to be able to see in my portal for first period AP Physics. I can create as many classrooms as I'd like, and once those students have been added in by their username, they will need to accept being in that classroom by email or in Google Classroom, there is a code that you can send to students or you can put up on the board and have them type it in themselves so that they then connect themselves into your Google Classrooms. A little tip for this, if you would like to sort your classrooms into first period, second period, third period, so it's very easy to click through them, either put a one or an A in front of your classes. So first period, I put a one because I want that to be at the top. If I second period, I would put two, then the title of my classroom, or I could do it alphabetically, A dash the name of my classroom, B dash the name of my classroom to sort them in order so that it's easy for me to click through them throughout the day. Your school has set up with us an automatic sync for twice a day. It happens once in 7 a.m. and once at 7 p.m. So if you are adding students throughout the day and they're accepting the invitation to your Google Classroom, you will not see them in your portal until the next time a sync happens. Also, if you archive a class, which in Google Classroom is their way of deleting a class, you will need to come in and also remove the group from your Senso portal as well. I wanted to take a moment and pause right here and show you what it's going to look like for your student users. When you switch into thumbnail view, their devices are going to lock and it's going to say, please share your screen. Then they will see this dialog box that will highlight their desktop and what they will need to do is double click on that image or click on that image and down there at the bottom click confirm. The easiest way is just to tell them to double click the image. This allows Senso to see everything outside of the browser. They only have to click on this the first time that they are in a session. So if they log into their Chromebook and you are in thumbnail view, they see this image, then they're going to go ahead and double click that uh, box on their desktop to go ahead and share it with you. You will see no active tab in your screen or you will also sometimes see please share your screen in your portal letting you know that that user has not clicked uh, double clicked on that image to go ahead and share their screen with you. Okay let's go ahead and jump right into the tools that you have available. I'm going to go ahead and click down here so that we can look at all three of my Chromebooks. And then I'm going to talk about the difference between list view and thumbnail view. List view shows you the devices that you have online, gives you some information about the users logged into them, and the name of the user accounts that are logged into these specific Chromebooks. I have switched over into thumbnail view. Now I can see a live thumbnail view of everything that's happening on these devices. This is not a screenshot or a timeline. This is live. This is exactly what is happening on those devices right now. Um, what you will notice is I can also click on a device just like that. And now I am looking at just one individual device instead of all the devices that would be in that thumbnail view. From here, I know it does say share control or full control on that because we are locked into the API that Google has given us access to. We cannot take control of the device through the portal, but you have a lot of tools that I'm going to show you in this video that allow you to actually manage or take over the device. 
So from here, you can see I have this nice full screen view of everything that's happening on this device. I can change the quality from low, medium, high. That's the actual quality of the screen thumbnail screen that I'm looking at right here. I can change the screen scale to make it bigger or smaller. And when I want to exit out of this view, I can either hit exit on my keyboard, excuse me, escape on my keyboard, or you saw right there when I went to screen scale, I had exit full screen. I can take a screenshot. You see right here, I have taken a picture of everything that's happening right now on that device. And I can send that to whomever needs to see that image. To close that tab, I'll show you again. I just click the X right here. I can have multiple tabs open. So if I go back to thumbnail view and click through each of my devices, you'll see that they're opening up tabs up here at the top. So if I click back to this tab, I am on this device. If I click this one, I'm on a different device. So you can have multiple tabs open at once. When I'm done with those multiple tabs, that's where that little X comes into play and you can close them down and just look at them in thumbnail view. These check boxes are very important. You can select all of your devices or deselect all of your devices right here where it says select all, or if maybe you only want to run any of our tools on maybe just an individual device or devices that you're going to handpick throughout your list. This is where you would want to put that check box check mark in that box. All right, so let's talk about the options you have right here in thumbnail view. You can filter the thumbnails from all, logged in, logged out, or none. This one is really great, show thumbnail title. Now I'll bring your attention right here. You see you have a lot of information at the top of these thumbnails. You may not need to know the device number of the Chromebook. You're really just interested in the student that's logged into that device. So you can change that if I click on username. Now I'm just gonna see the email address that they've logged into that device with. If I just wanna see the display name, the just the name of the student that's logged into that device, I will change it to display name. And now you see Marley Smith, Texas Kolb, Augustus Nelson. These are the students that are logged onto these devices and it makes you e it, it, it easier to manage them from here. The expand thumbnails, you see I can make the thumbnails bigger or smaller all the way down to teeny tiny. The great thing about this is you can have up to 250 thumbnails in this view at once. If you would like to modify how many thumbnails are in a view, you would come up here, excuse me, and go to profile. On profile, you can change your preferences in your console, the maximum thumbnail count, default quality, even over here, you can change your display name. This is important because if you don't change your display name, it's just going to say console user. You want to make sure you change that to a name that your students are going to recognize that is you as a teacher so that when you send them messages or use one of our tools, they know who it's coming from in Senso. So let me go ahead and put that back to display name just so it's a little bit easier. All right, so let's talk about the tools at the top. Let's start with block internet. Here you have the ability to disable their access to a browser. It does not turn off the internet on these devices. What it does is it disables their ability to use the Chrome browser. So see when I selected those devices, again, referencing those check boxes, that their access to get into Chrome has been disabled. When I am ready to re-enable it, I will just simply click enable and run. I'm going to do that in just a moment because I want to bring your attention to this nice little emblem right here at the bottom that says internet disabled. This lets you know that these devices have had the internet disabled on them. They can still open extensions that don't require them to go out to the Chrome browser and they can still utilize the device. The device is still online until you come in and click enable and now you'll see that that emblem is gone away and the internet has been re-enabled on these devices. Now, let's say a teacher in a different classroom has locked a device. That device has come, you know, the student has come to you and now they can't use their device because their internet has been disabled. You can find that student in your portal and use your enable internet to override that so that student can continue to do their work. You will not have to contact that original teacher and ask them to re-enable or enable the internet. And this also for some of the other tools I'm going to showcase like lock screen that will work for them as well. Okay, 
So I have re-enabled. You'll see it still says internet disabled. I'm going to reach over here and I'm going to refresh the screen and open it back up so that you can see. The internet has been re-enabled on that device and now they can use the Chrome browser to get to the websites they need to get to. Sorry about the squeaky chair. I'm trying to not move very much, so I apologize if it squeaks a little bit in the background. Block sound. Have the ability to block sound of the active tab. You can even limit the uh, limit the how high or low the sound can go on those devices. Broadcast screen. Have the ability to choose a device, either a student device or maybe your Chromebook, and broadcast your screen or a student screen out to those users. So once I have selected the ones I want to be included into this broadcast, you will want to select the device that you want to be the broadcaster. In this example, Marley Smith, I want to broadcast their screen out to all the other screens. I can show the broadcast in a separate window. I cannot allow the user to close it. You know, you have a lot of options within here. And then when I click start, it's going to actually push that broadcast out. So now anything that happens on Marley Smith's computer is going to happen on these other devices. So if I open another website or the example that I like to give is you're trying to show, show students how to open something up on their Chromebooks. This is how you open an extension. This is how you open up Gmail. This is a great, great way for you to broadcast your screen out to those students and have them follow along on their devices as you show them exactly where to go on the device to do something. Close Active Tab. This allows you to close the Active Tab in, in Chrome. So you see I have two tabs open. If I click Run, I'm going to close that tab and go to the next tab. If I click Run again, it's going to close the tab. So I can keep closing tabs all the way out to the desktop. This is great if you maybe see a student off task and you want to go into that device and close that tab and, you know, refocus their attention back to where they need to be. Now I know this one down here still says internet disabled. That's just because I don't want to walk over on the other side of the office and refresh, you know, uh, refresh Chrome on there because my chair is really squeaky. So this one is able to get to the internet you saw on there because we're sending things out to it. I just haven't refreshed it quite yet. Okay, let's talk about launch applications and websites. This is really great because now you can type in and have the ability to run websites automatically on your devices. Again, I can run it on one individually or I can select all of my devices and run it. And you'll see even if I'm pushing out multiple websites or the same website over and over, it's going to open up multiple tabs for them. So you can have different uh, websites that you want them to go to in a day and you can push them out over and, and it will keep opening those tabs up. Now, the great thing about this is you can save this as a shortcut. So maybe this is a website you use all the time, but it has a really long URL in there. So copy and paste it right into here. I'm going to use iStation for my example. You can save it as a shortcut, which is going to make a shortcut just like these other ones that I've put right here or you can actually create your own button. You will see I've created some buttons already for a PBS and another one that I'm gonna talk about in just a moment. So if I save and run, it's gonna actually save and run it on the devices or if maybe I'm getting ready for a lesson plan for later on, I can save and close. Now you'll see right here, I forgot to go in and label it. I did that on purpose because I wanted to show you how you can edit these. So now, once I have created this shortcut, this is an icon, this is the shortcut, I go, oh, I forgot to label it. I wanna label it iStation. I go to Manage Shortcuts, and I go to Edit. So now I can change the shortcut name to iStation so I remember that this is the one that's gonna take me out to the iStation website, and maybe I didn't wanna make a button out of it. Maybe I just wanted to make a shortcut. I could change all of my options in here, and you'll see when I click Confirm and Close, it now changes that to a button I can remember. So now I can click once, PBS is gonna open. Click once, iStation is going to open. Same thing over here if I wanted to do that within that drop down list of those shortcuts. Now, the reason I want to come back to this one is you can actually run extensions that are installed locally on your Chromebooks. So right now I have gone through and I want to open up slides for all of my users. 
you'll see here that I have made some changes in my launch application and website. So I'm going to walk you through how to make a change like that so you can actually run extensions just like I did with Google Slides. So in your browser, let me come out of full screen. You can go to the three dots. You'll go to more tools and extensions. Any extension that gets loaded onto a Chromebook is assigned a, a unique ID. You see how all of these have these unique IDs? So I copied the slides one. So this one, let's copy docs, okay? So now I'm going to copy that unique ID back over in my Senso console. I'm going to open up launch application and website, choose application and paste that unique ID right there. Again, save it as a shortcut so you know what it is. This one is docs. And we're gonna save it as an icon as well. So this time I'm gonna choose save and run. So now you'll see that it will automatically run Google Docs and also it will create me an icon here and a uh, shortcut right here. And again, at any time I want to remove, rename, whatever I need to do on any of my icons, which are those buttons, or these shortcuts, I just come in to manage shortcuts. Lock screen, have the ability to lock the devices so that they have to pay attention to you as you're giving instructions, you want them to wait for something, or you just simply wanna lock their screen and refocus the attention of the class. This is something that again can be customized. So you see I pushed lock to lock them and unlock to unlock them. I can change the background color, um, I can give a customized message. Good morning. And again, save it as a shortcut if it's something you're going to use all the time, especially good morning. And then now I can click save and run. Good morning. When I'm ready to unlock the devices, I click unlock and unlock. I made a shortcut for this. So now if I want to use this all the time, one button push, I don't have to go back in and recreate this all over, and then when I'm ready to unlock it, unlock it. Okay, next tool, send files and documents. Upload a file from any device to your cloud account. Now this is gonna follow you around, so you can log on to a different, uh, from a different computer, from your phone, from wherever you access portal.senso.cloud. These files are gonna follow you around, so these could be lesson plans, PDFs, JPEGs, whatever it is that you wanna send out to your students. They're gonna follow you around until you delete them. So I have an image right here that I have uploaded earlier. I'm gonna select that image. Again, that checkbox comes into play. I'm gonna automatically run after sending. I would really honestly say here that you don't need to worry about the save to location arguments, use logged in permissions, or these username, password, and domains. These are some tools that are specific for Windows devices or for the admin team on the back end. For teachers in the classroom, when I do these trainings, I tell them just select the image or PDF or lesson plan, whatever you're sending to your students, and automatically run after sending, and then click send. And you'll see that it'll pop up on the users devices, and then they have the option to copy to their clipboard or save into their cloud account. Now, remember earlier when I said it's very important for you to um, have the console user, your profile changed, this is why. Because you want them to be able to see where this is coming from. So um, you'll see that it, it slid down right there, and I brought this up for a reason because I wanted to show you this. The image, when you send files to them, it doesn't stay on their screen. It will slide down, and you see that little three right there? That lets your students know that they have something that you have sent them. Um, they Classroom management wise, let them know if you see a number down there, I have sent you a, a, a file, I have sent you a message, you need to look at that because it's something from me. And changing your profile name up here lets them know who it's from. So that's again why I brought that up and why that's very important to change your profile name for when you send things and have messages with your students. Speaking of messages, again, here's a, another tool. You can, hello world. This is a static message that you can send out to your users. You'll see there, this is a message from SuperText and that will stay there and then slide away and change that number we just talked about. 
I have one again that I saved as a shortcut. It's good morning and I send that message to your users. A little tip here is if you did want to have a live chat back and forth with your, your users, have open up docs for them. You can send them a message and say, open a new doc. I'm going to ask you questions and you can answer them. And then you can see in live time them responding to your uh, questions right here on their screen. Okay. So that is the tools that you have available at your school district. This is the how to utilize the thumbnail view versus list view. Let's talk about a couple other things up here at the top. This just takes you back to the home screen, so essentially just refreshes your portal. That's all that that button does. The next one, let me get back over into Chromebooks. This next one are messages from us. These are messages from us to our customers to let them know about social media events, when we do updates, that sort of thing. So again, these are messages from your Senso company to you. Um, that is going to be the end of this. You also have another video that was recorded that was sent from the uh, training that we had the other day. So now you have access to this training and that training for whichever one you would like to watch. You can also always go to support.senso.cloud. We have some knowledge base articles that go through with nice screenshots about all the tools I talked about today. And also if you search for senso.cloud on YouTube, we have a YouTube channel that contains uh, videos that go through each one of these tools individually and some that are similar to this where we talk you through classroom management tools. I would highly suggest checking back to that YouTube channel in the next couple of months because we're revamping how it looks and making it easier to find videos. Okay everyone, thank you for joining me today and I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Thank you.